Hi, it's Mr. Anderson. This is AP Biology Science Practice 5. It's on analyzing data and evaluating evidence. Remember, in the last two practices, we talked about you know, good questioning and then good collection of data. But once you have a bunch of data, then you have to start looking through it and telling, you know, is this good data or bad data? Is there extraneous data? Are there outliers? How do I control for that? And then more importantly, like, what does it tell me about my question? And one person who collected a lot of data during his lifetime was Charles David Keeling. And he was collecting data on the amount of atmospheric carbon dioxide at Mauna Loa on Hawaii. And so this is just a sampling of some of his data. And when you look at it, the first thing you might realize is, wow, this is overwhelming. This is just data from one year. So I can't tell anything from that. And so the first thing you want to do is you want to organize the data. And a graph is a great way to do that. So what we're looking at is, you know, from 1960s until today, this is the amount of atmospheric carbon dioxide. And so we can see that it's increasing, and this is clearly tied to global warming and the greenhouse effect. You also see annual cycling that we would have to, have to account for. Um, that has to do with the sun moving to the northern and southern hemisphere, and so we get different amounts of plant growth, and therefore we get varying amounts of carbon dioxide. And so the first step is looking at the data and seeing, you know, are there patterns within this that I can learn from? But then we also want to control for that. And so... Um, Let's say I give you the following question. How does fertilizer amount affect plant growth? And you collect a lot of data. Well, looking at that data, I, I don't learn much until I start to graph it and take a look at it. So if we put fertilizer on the X and plant growth on the Y, now I see a relationship or a curve of fit that says an increase in fertilizer is going to give me an increase in plant growth. Uh, what might happen after that? We could extrapolate on what would happen if we increase it. Um, but now we could look at the why, like why is the increase in fertilizer going to increase the amount of plant growth? And so we can look at questions like that. And so the College Board is going to ask you or test your ability to analyze data in each of the following four big ideas. And so if we're looking at evolution, um, they've said that they could ask you questions related to the history on our planet. Now, they're going to not ask you a lot of minutiae questions about, you know, learning all of the Devonian, learning all of the periods and the eras and the epics, but they could ask you sequential questions or gathering data from a certain era. What does that tell us? Um, in the area of free energy, the sucrose lab is a great one they keep coming back to. So this is, again, taking potatoes, putting them in different concentrations of sucrose solution, and then looking at what happens to the percent change in mass. If we're looking at information, this is clearly signal transduction. And so how cells are taking information outside and then and then responding to that. So the whole blood glucose feedback would be a great example of questions they could ask you. And then the area of systems, structure fits function. In other words, this is non-competitive um, inhibition of an enzyme. And so how does the structure of that competitor uh, molecule, how is it going to affect its function? And so uh, let's get look at some examples. And so they're going to ask you questions in three different areas. And the first one is they want you, your, you to be able to analyze data to identify patterns. And so this would be an example of a short essay question they might ask. In one paragraph, explain biological factors that determine the shape of the graphs pictured above. And so this is clearly the, a, a perfect example of the predator-prey relationship. And they're asking you to look at biotic factors. And so why is the prey going to vary like this? And we could talk about, you know, the food supplies, the amount of space that they have. Um, maybe it's com competition with other organisms, other prey species, and then interactions with the predator. Why are we seeing an increase in the predator species? Well, we had an increase in prey, so now predators are going to have more young, but then as the prey drops off, the predator is going to drop off. And so there's lots of areas that you could take this into using the data that you're presented here. Um, let's say we give you straight out data set like this. So this is that potato lab where you're going to put different um, potato cores in different concentrations of sugar water. So they have different molarity here. This is the initial mass of the potato cores. And then this is the final mass. So they might ask you to identify possible sources of error in the data set. And so we've learned so well what happens if we have different concentrations of sugar water. But maybe this data is wrong. So if we look at it right here... I see that there's no change in the point 4, but then when it's in point 2, I'm seeing a decrease in that mass, and that doesn't seem right, and so maybe the beakers were mislabeled. And so how could we revise the protocol to obtain more valid data? And so be looking out for that. 
being able to take in observations and then refine that. What, where is the problem coming from and then trying to correct that? And sometimes the data is just going to be in a multiple choice question. So right here we've got a genetics question where we have these tiny blue-eyed Mary flowers. Um, we've got blue, but sometimes we'll have white and pink, it says in the description. So they're giving you the crosses, the P generations, the F1, and then the F2. And as I look through this, I see this looks like a 3 to 1, a 3 to 1, and this looks a little bit crazy down here, almost like a 2 to 1 to 1. And so um, which of the following accounts for that explanation? So you may want to pause the video and then take a, take a stab at this question. As I went through it, uh, I was able to rule out, I mean, it sure looks like inheritance. I was able to cross out the first three, and the right answer here is going to be D. And so we're looking at is that there's another gene product. And so this is um, epistasis. We're having one gene affecting other genes, accounting for the different colors. And so again, data is amazing. We collect data. We first have to visualize it, and then we try to explain it. Um, and it's not always easy to do that. Sometimes we have to look back at our question. Was the question good? And was their controls good? But once we have data, data is amazing. And, and one entity in, our, uh, in the states that collects a huge amount of data is NASA. But they don't always know how to get that data back to the people. And so this is so they have a group at NASA that's helping them to visualize that. And they've created this animation called the Perpetual Ocean, which is looking at the um, ocean currents. And it almost looks like a Van Gogh, but if we run it, you can learn a ton from data. And I hope that was helpful.